Welcome to another episode of Ask Daily Stoic. You send me, Ryan Holiday, your questions about Stoicism, about the Stoics, about life. I try to answer. We put it on YouTube. We put it on the podcast. Thanks for listening. And if you want to send us some questions, you can send those in at info at dailystoic.com. All right. Our first question, how should I react or embrace a continuous problem? For example, my roommate does not pick up around the house. This is not an issue that I could simply let go or embrace. I'm forcibly put into a situation I don't want to be in. Another example is that I'm working at a job I don't want to work at. This is a situation I don't want to be in. Quitting is a gamble on my future, even granting that it was my own ignorance that brought the, the situation. A bad job is not something you intend. What do I do? So I think this is a good question. So first off, the Stoics would go like, let's say, let's say there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. So you have to endure it. Is it really so bad that you have to endure some, some mess around the house? You know, Marcus Realist goes like, endure it. It can't go on forever because you'll die or they'll die. And so there's kind of a glibness to that, but I think it's true. It's just a reminder that like, look, this is not cancer, right? And, but sometimes because we don't have other problems going on, we, or because we do have other problems going on, we fixate on these <clears throat> minor things or we fixate on what other people are doing. So the second thing the Stokes would talk about would be that, right? What can you do around your house that might influence the situation, right? Instead of just hoping your roommate will change their behavior, instead of yelling at them to change their behavior, instead of focusing on them, which you don't control, what do you control, right? Uh, And maybe it's having a conversation, maybe it's setting up systems, maybe it's cleaning up your stuff. Maybe if you really hate it, it's just cleaning up their stuff, right? There's lots of options inside that. And then the the third thing the Stokes would go is like, Okay, if you really don't like this, if you're really unhappy with it, what are you willing to trade to get out of it, right? Can you move? Can you uh, sublet out your unit? Like, just get out of it, right? Like, uh, if it's really making you as miserable as you feel like it's making you, and the Stoics would would say it's probably not, but let's say it is, can you get out of it? I I think about this with jobs. Like, there's been plenty of jobs that I've had that I haven't liked. So I say, okay, I'm going to leave this job. I'm going to do something else. In the meantime, though, let's say I can't leave until I save up enough money to do X or there's this project I have to finish. I go, now that I know that there is an end date to this thing that's causing me discomfort or misery, what can I learn in the interim period? What can I do in the interim period? And I think this is a similar thing with your roommate. So you've got three months left on your lease. Okay, can you practice putting up with this for three months? Can you practice being, you know, more direct if you're a non-confrontational person with your roommate for the next three months? Can you practice being more organized and helpful? And what, like, what, are, what is the opportunity? If, if you cannot change the situation, if you simply have to put up with it, what can you do in that peer, what, what can you do with that fact that makes you better, that presents you an opportunity to improve? But all of this, I think, is under the larger umbrella, which is they sound like some first world problems. So not to belittle it, but they sound like some first world problems. So I'd... I'd Keep that in perspective as well. All right, the next question. Would you recommend a work of any modern philosopher who is Stoic or influenced by Stoicism? I absolutely can. It's a great question. And I happen to have this book in front of me because I was talking about it in an earlier question. This is Pierre Hadot. He's a French philosopher. He wrote a fantastic book about Marcus Aurelius called The Inner Citadel, The Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. There's another book. Let me get it. Philosophy as a Way of Life by Pierre Hadot. Also very good, influenced sort of about Stoicism, but not just about Stoicism. Let me see what else I've got here. Um, I, don't, I don't have my copy, but Donald Robertson's book, uh, How to Think Like a Roman Emperor, uh, came out recently. Very good. He's a great thinker about Stoicism. Very thoughtful guy. Alain de Baton has written some interesting things, sort of inspired by, about Stoicism. We did an interview with Darren Brown. He's a British magician, but he's also written books on happiness that are largely influenced by Stoicism. I think he's really great. So we've got a bunch of resources on the Daily Stoic website, um, but I would say two uh, other books, if I was thinking philosophy. Uh, Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, very good, sort of driven by stoicism in a lot of ways. You know, I think Mark Manson, if I was going to really pop, really 
sort of accessible, recent, modern. I think Mark Manson's stuff, which is a little more uh, Zen Buddhist uh, than than Stoic, but I I'd sort of consider him a fellow traveler. He's a great guy. Check out his books as well. Hey there, it's Ryan Holiday. You're listening to the Daily Stoic Podcast. Today's sponsor of the show is LinkedIn. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to have discussions with CEOs of billion dollar companies, Super Bowl winning teams, military and political leaders. The one thing that all these people agree on always, no matter what the industry, is that organizations are no better than the people inside them. The best way for an organization to succeed is to find great talent and support it. But the reality is it can be really hard to find the person you're looking for for the right job. But that's where this week's sponsor, LinkedIn Jobs, comes in. LinkedIn Jobs shows you candidates with the key skills you are looking for so you can hire them ASAP. We're hiring people right now for Daily Stokes, so we are using this ourselves. You can get great tools to put your job opening out there for the best candidates, like email and text alerts, and get promoted within search results. LinkedIn, make sure that your job post is seen by the people that you want to hire. Whether you're looking for a tech wizard or a proven leader, LinkedIn puts your job post in front of qualified candidates who match your business requirements perfectly. And look, nobody is bigger than LinkedIn and nobody has a better proven track record in connecting candidates with the job openings that business owners need to fill. And that's why a person is hired every eight seconds with LinkedIn. That's pretty insane. And that's why companies have rated LinkedIn jobs the number one hiring platform for delivering quality hires. So if you want to find the right person for your business today, use LinkedIn Jobs. You can pay what you want and you get the first $50 off. Just visit linkedin.com slash stoic. Again, that's linkedin.com slash stoic to get $50 off your first job post. Obviously, some terms and conditions apply. I have a small problem reconciling my atheism with my stoicism can one be both? I'm sure the answer is yes, but I would love to hear it discussed. I mean, look, I don't think you have to reconcile your atheism with Stoicism. Uh, I, to me, Stoicism is a philosophy and uh, religion is separate. So there's this great quote um, from Flaubert where he, he talks about how there was this moment in history between Cicero and Marcus Aurelius, he says, where man stood alone in the universe. Marcus Aurelius and Christianity do not go well together, actually. So it's the opposite of the reconciliation. I think the Christians probably have more work to do. But, but Rusticus, who introduces Mar Marcus Aurelius to Stoicism, persecutes and executes Justin Martyr. Seneca's brother adjudicates a case involving St. Paul. So for, for many, many years of, of Stoicism's sort of heyday in Rome, it was outwardly hostile to Christianity. And, and I'm writing about this a little bit in, in my next book, so you can stay tuned for that. But Stoicism definitely believed that there was a God but or, or gods, but more in the Roman sense. So gods were these sort of rituals, these sort of official deities. It, it, it wasn't the same as, as, as the sort of Christianity, sort of modern religious sense that we have now. There's a recent translation of, of an essay of, by Cicero that sort of uh, focuses on Stoicism and spirituality. It's by Princeton University Press. I think it's called How to Think About God um, or What to Think About God or some, something like that. But I, I might check that out. It's sort of an interesting dialogue. There's plenty in Stoicism that makes it compatible with religion. The idea of the logos or fate you know, the word and the way, both that, that's logos uh, in Latin, that's there. But at the same time, like the Stoics are talking about, I think, a much more logical reason for doing the things that they do. So like Jesus and Seneca are born in the same year. And whereas Jesus is saying like, follow me, obey the law of God, or you'll go to hell or, or you know, like you won't have an afterlife. I think what Seneca is saying at the very same time in the very same empire is like, don't be a bad person because you'll be unhappy, right? It will make you miserable. So I think really the Stoics are saying a lot of similar things to the Christians, but they're saying them for very different reasons. Um, and, and there were plenty of, of Christians. Uh, actually, the, the interesting thing about Justin Martyr is like he studied a Stoic philosopher before he under a Stoic philosopher before he converted to Christianity. So 
I don't think you, I don't think they're as unreconcilable as you think, but they're also quite easily reconciled. Christianity and Stoicism or atheism and Stoicism, I think primarily what the Stoics would tell you to do is just focus on what is making you a better, more virtuous person, not what solves some metaphysical, you know, explanation of the universe. Focus on your self-improvement, not these big abstract questions. Anyways, that's what I try to do. Hey everyone, I'm sitting here talking to you in a pair of sweatpants and slippers from this week's sponsor, Mac Weldon. They're super comfortable, they look awesome. It was really easy to find them when I was shopping online on their store, and it's actually hard not to find something you won't like. Mac Weldon believes in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. I was a first time buyer, I love what I got. So check it out. They have other great stuff. They have a line of silver antimicrobial shirts and underwear that eliminate odor. These are basics that look good. They're super resilient. You can wear them to the gym, on a date, to work, wherever. There's a great return policy. If you don't like even their underwear, you can keep it for free. But I think you'll like them. For 20% off your first order, you can go to MacWeldon.com. Dot com. That's M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N, MacWeldon.com, and you can enter promo code STOIC. That's MacWeldon.com, enter promo code STOIC. Also in today's episode, I thought I would read the February 1st entry for the Daily Stoic. Um, I didn't read the audiobook, so I thought you might like to hear some from me. The day's headline is, For the Hot-Headed Man... And the quote comes to us from Marcus Aurelius. He said, Keep this thought handy when you feel a fit of rage coming on. It isn't manly to be enraged. Rather, gentleness and civility are more human and therefore manlier. A real man doesn't give way to anger and discontent. And such a person has strength, courage, and endurance, unlike the angry and complaining. The nearer a man comes to a calm mind, the closer he is to strength. And then the story for the day or the the discussion, it goes as follows. It says, why do athletes talk trash to each other? Why do they deliberately say offensive and nasty things to their competitors when the refs aren't looking? To provoke a reaction. Distracting and angering opponents is an easy way to knock them off their game. Try to remember that when you find yourself getting mad. Anger is not impressive or tough. It's a mistake. It's weakness. Depending on what you're doing, it might even be a trap that someone laid for you. Fans and opponents called boxer Joe Lewis the ring robot because he was utterly unemotional. His cold, calm demeanor was far more terrifying than any crazed look or emotional outburst would have been. Strength is the ability to maintain a hold of oneself. It's being the person who never gets mad, who cannot be rattled because they are in control of their passions rather than controlled by their passions. Thanks, guys. Uh, This has been another episode of Ask Daily Stoic. Keep asking questions. You can send them to info at dailystoic.com, and uh, I'll keep answering them. Thanks. Hey, thanks for watching Daily Stoic. If you want to learn more about Stoicism, you can check out some of our other videos here. Subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. Keep learning. Keep studying. And remember those four Stoic virtues, courage, justice, temperance, and wisdom.